Hello Indie Game fans, December is usually front-loaded with new releases since it is the last chance for developers to get their game out before Game of the Year, so do excuse me if I repeat myself a little in indie gaming this week. But there are some long-anticipated titles that makes it to launch next month. We begin with the wonderful Elba A Wildlife Adventure, a gorgeous looking puzzle adventure game from the creators of Monument Valley and Assemble with Care. It has you exploring a Mediterranean island while visiting your grandparents, doing your part to save the local wildlife. The self-styled Chilectathon allows you to take things at your own pace, being a feel-good game about running around and doing good deeds, which I think should get you in a more hopeful frame of mind for the coming year. another title that will make you puke rainbows to the list. Fox is a cartoony co-op puzzle adventure about a two-headed dog travelling through a colourful and whimsical world, exploring food, sleep and play. I've had my eye on this title for quite a while, so to see it being finally released is very exciting. You left a year ago to search for a cure for my affliction. An island in the middle of the Pacific that the locals refuse to even name. A title which impressed with the beauty of the graphics is Call of the Sea, optimized for Xbox Series X, which will tap on some of that power. But suddenly they stopped coming. What happened, Opal? What did you find? It is a first-person adventure game about exploring a beautiful island in the South Pacific where you play as a woman searching for her missing husband amidst the remnants of a lost civilization. Stealth games are difficult to come by these days, and while it is not my favourite genre, I do have to give a very special shout out to El Iho, A Wild West Tale. However, rather than playing as a sneaky assassin or spy, you are instead playing as a little boy who must just use mischief and tricks in order to get what he wants. I do like the spaghetti western setting that they have created, not often done well in games, but fingers crossed this will be great. The Dark Horse pick of the month has to be Garlic, a one-bit action platformer similar to the recently released Dojoran or more commonly Gato Roboto. It's a lot more action focused, where you're trying to ascend a secret tower to seduce the cyber goddess and thus have a sense of humour that is shown off nicely in the trailer. I do appreciate one-bit pixel art titles, so this has my interest, but its tentative release date is the 30th of December, which is cutting it a little close. I've mentioned the first-person aerial combat title Skycadia before, and lo and behold, it should launch in December.
from the look, it's similar to something that you might find on a Nintendo 64, but of course with the modern polish and jazz, where you're hunting sky pirates and collecting bounties. The camera may be a little disorienting in the trailer, but I do hope that it is resolved in-game where you do actually get some control, and I'm interested in the overall structure of the game of whether collected bounties can be used for upgrades as an example. I've also had my eye on Crumble for a very, very long time since it is a precision platformer where you control a little blue blob who is able to roll, jump and grapple with its tongue as it traverses through crumbling landscapes. It does look really fast paced and like a real challenge and I cannot wait to see insane speed runs of this title. The long anticipated RPG Haven from the makers of Fury finally makes it to launch and is an interesting title with two main characters, a pair of lovers who eloped to another planet and now have to find a way to survive. Of course, there are some adversaries from something known as the Council that is hunting them down but it looks absolutely gorgeous with perhaps a heartfelt story as well. It can be played solo but seems best in co-op to grab your significant other and dig in. We decide to escape the Ikir, which apparently no one has managed to do before us. We punch in some coordinates really at random, we travel across space in a Class D ship that is totally not designed for that. I still can't believe we made it. <laughs> yeah, the odds weren't in our favor. This planet is our chance to start a new life, with our own rules. We can decide whatever we want, and no one can tell us otherwise. Arrest in progress. Ah! You stay away! Any other takers? I was pretty sure the council would try to bring us back to the apiary, but this seems over the top. I hope this is only the beginning, and that I'll have many more chances to almost die with you. Aren't you a charmer? To us. To us. Woohoo! Move it, Muffin! Woo! Are you sure you know what you're doing? Do you think I'll let them take me back there? The question isn't whether or not we're going. It's whether or not you're coming with me. Thanks! That's it! Oh no! They're still there! You know they will eventually catch us! But until that time arrives, we'll be alive. Together. That's why I'm here. With you. I want to be with you. To spend the rest of my life with you. Until the last moment, then? Until the last moment. I love monster taming RPGs, and when you use pixel art and add in Metroidvania elements, of course, Monster Sanctuary will be of interest. I've been checking in with this title in Early Access on and off, where there was quite a significant graphical revision since the Early Access launch, but I can vouch for the quality of this title as it launches in 1.0. Really amazing look and a clever mashup of genres, this gets a high spot on my personal picks. And the no-brainer pick of the month is Morbid the Seven Acolytes, a Souls-like action-adventure game that looks gory and gorgeous at the same time. It's full of your eldritch horrors and monsters, and the developers did put out a rather long explainer video, but some very interesting information and glimpses at the systems which should be of interest, taking the number one spot. Greetings, my name is Simo Talasranta. I'm the composer, sound designer, and writer at Still Running. I'm very excited to talk to you today about our upcoming horror punk action RPG, Morbid the Seven Acolytes. 
Morbid the Seven Acolytes is the most gruesome take on the isometric Souls-like genre yet. The game is all about Lovecraftian horrors, Cronenbergian gore, and exploring an immersive fantasy world of gothic steampunk aesthetics, abundant with deep and tragic lore. In Morbid, you get to play as the last surviving striver of Dibram, a young but fierce underdog trained in both melee and ranged combat. Your duty is to defeat the Seven Acolytes, a cursed and powerful beings possessed by the malevolent deities called Gahars, who've taken over the kingdom. Here we see one of the Acolytes, Lorne the Blind. Once a great leader of the proud sailors of Solia, Lorne fell for the Gahars, who removed his eyes and imprisoned him in the caverns of solitude. Bitter and angry, Lorne vowed to take the eyes of any traveler who by chance or purpose would ever cross his domain. One of the most impactful features of the game are the blessings of Magrathias, which allow the player to level up and customize the skill set of their character in countless different ways. As the amount of available blessings, slots and skill points increase over the game, your options to develop your character branch out exponentially. You could become an expert in ranged combat, specialize in certain melee weapon groups, build a tanky bruiser, a sneaky assassin, an agile acrobat, or go absolutely nuts with your build and try something completely different, all in accordance to your preferred playstyle of course. The land of Mornia is both vast and diverse. Rummaging through every nook and cranny of the world might take time, but rest assured, you will be rewarded. Some of the best loot in the game lies off-road or can only be earned through beating the many optional bosses and side quests of the game. Early on in development, we knew that the boss fights will be a central feature in Morbid. Therefore, a lot of blood, sweat and tears, and hair, I might add, have been shed to make them as awesome as possible. Here we see Lady Tristana, Mother Grief, a controversial character who uses her own placenta as a weapon. We really wanted to do something unforgettable with the Acolytes, and thus each new boss fight aims to bring something fresh and exciting to the table, upping the ante both conceptually and gameplay-wise till the very end of the game. It's also worth mentioning that all the Acolytes have their own epic tracks on the fully orchestrated soundtrack of Morbid, so be sure to keep an ear out for them. We will also have a dialogue system in the game, which further enables us to bring Mornia alive, as the player can interact with the many interesting characters of the world, but more on that on a later date. Because another important feature we'd like to present to you today is the sanity meter, the blue bar on the left side of the screen there. Sanity has both thematically and mechanically a large role in the game, as the player has to manage her mental health whilst facing the abysmal horrors of the accursed kingdom of Mornia. Losing your sanity to the many mind-draining monsters of the world naturally has some pretty nasty side effects. However, you can work the deranged state of your character to your advantage, if you're skilled enough. Morbid the Seven Acolytes is no walk in the park. Challenging foes, mini-bosses and large-scale boss fights are central features of the game. To overcome these obstacles you must master the combat and the mechanics of the game, as well as improve your character and gear through various RPG elements such as quests, perks, runes, upgrades and of course, looting. We are very excited to be bringing Morbid the Seven Acolytes to Nintendo Switch PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One later this year. So stay tuned and follow us on social media to join us in taking the final steps of the development and to be among the first to know the official release date of Morbid the Seven Acolytes. That's all for now. Thank you so much for your time. Magrathias bless you. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.